Welcome once again to Help, I'm a Parent, Christian Parenting in the Real World. We're so happy that you have invited us to enter into your home, your church, or wherever you may be gathered today. Perhaps you're viewing this alone or as a couple or with a small group of friends, or maybe with a large group there in your church. Or perhaps you are watching this online. Wherever you are today, we are delighted you've joined us for this program. We are your hosts, Drs. Claudio and Pamela Consuegra, and together we serve as the Directors for Family Ministries for the North American Division of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. We believe that the most important role you will ever play is being a parent to your child. God has entrusted you with a treasure more precious than anything else you will ever own. In this segment, we're going to look at ways we can help our children develop a personal relationship with Jesus and make Him their best friend. As Christian parents, our goal in raising our children is not just to prepare them to go out into the world as fully functioning adults. Our goal as Christian parents is to prepare our children for eternity. This should shape all that we do in our homes. Have you ever started a fire in your fireplace or campground? What did you need to start that fire? When I was a little girl, I used to love to visit my grandparents. They had a wood stove, and they cooked and heated their home, everything with this stove. But it demanded many trips to gather wood. It was while doing this chore with my grandfather that he taught me the importance of kindling in order to start that good fire. Can you start a fire with wet, green, fresh wood? Well, possibly, but it sure takes a lot more work and effort to do it that way. In the same way, if we want to kindle God's fire in our children, we need to have the right conditions and the right materials. So what are those conditions? What can we do as parents to help our children develop a forever friendship with Jesus? In Deuteronomy chapter 6, verses 6 through 9, Scripture talks to us regarding our roles as parents. And these words which I command you today shall be in your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit down in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontless between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. Those words place a heavy responsibility on us as parents. Our responsibility is to be faithful to our charge as parents. God has entrusted our little ones to us as their stewards, and it is our task to introduce them to Him. We want to thank you for being with us on today's program, and we invite you to stay with us as we talk about how to help our children have a forever friendship with Jesus Christ. How do we make Jesus real to our children? How can we help them invite Him into their lives? Today we have invited a very special couple to share practical ways that we can help our children develop a forever friendship with Jesus. Our special guests today are Dr. Christine Gillenburn, her husband Kevin, and their six-year-old daughter Lucy. Christine holds degrees in early childhood education, early childhood special education, and a Doctor of Education in Educational Administration and Leadership. She is the founder of Young Child Ministries and is the author of two children's books. Each deal with one of the foundational beliefs, and she has several more books coming out very soon. Kevin is the pastor of the Seventh-day Adventist Church in Ojai, California, an area well known for its spiritualistic influences. Together, the Burns have been called to begin a ministry called the Washita Hills Center for Health. With the word health being an acronym for healing every aspect of life through Him. And it is located in Polk County, Arkansas, an area surrounded by counties which have little to no Adventist presence. Christine and Kevin, we want to thank you so much for giving of your time and being our guests on this program today. Yes. Thank you for the privilege. Yeah, we're happy to be here. You thank know, you. before we get into the topic and start our conversation, we want to take a look into the home of a family who's asking this question, how do they help their children have a forever friendship with Jesus Christ? So that let's visit them. 
as we consider the topic of making Jesus our children's best friend, there are quite a few challenges that we face. Our daily worship, it is, um, sometimes we do face challenges, trying to get them all together. Sometimes they have games in the evenings, um, just to find that right time where all of us can be together to dedicate the time to Jesus. It, sometimes it's very hard uh, to find that. Uh, to my older one, we, can have, we have said, well, it's your responsibility, seven o'clock, it's your, uh, you know, you have to bring everybody together so we can take the time out and worship. So it works for a little while and then it fizzles out. So something like that, I need to know what as parents we can do, uh, how to bring our family together on a daily basis for a daily family worship. Since both my sons are of two different ages, mm -hmm. it's hard to find the material for worship which is appropriate for both their ages. You read it from here. Um, we try for our kids not to watch TV too much. We try to engage them in other activities, but it is hard um, to think of things that they can do. You know, I encourage them to color and draw, but how much can they do? And after that, I keep thinking, well, what else can I give them? What else can they do? Um, they can't be reading all the time. so. That's one of the challenges I face, like different activities that I can do with them or uh, that they can do on their own that can occupy their time so they're not constantly thinking about, oh, let me go and watch some TV or um, play on the iPad or any something like that, you know. That's um, if getting to find activities for them that can engage them. For some reason, Saturday mornings, is very challenging for us. It's, even though they go to bed on time, we make sure they you know, get to bed on time on Friday evenings, but Saturday morning is one of those days. It's like, come on, get up, you're getting late. We gotta be there by 9.15. Sabbath school starts at 9.30. And um, it's hard for me or for us to get them going in the mornings. As I consider the whole topic, uh, both me and my wife, we send our uh, children to an Adventist school. Um, we take them to church. We try to have family worship every evening. How do we know that we are making Christ our children's best friend? That is the question that I really have. So they are a real family asking this question. Christine, how do we as parents make Jesus real to our little ones? It is so difficult. I mean, we live in a world of artificiality. Everywhere we turn, everything we see, there's so much artificial. So it is very difficult for us to be able to make Jesus real. But I would, I would say that there's three keys. Hmm to making Jesus your real best friend. The first one would be relationships. Mm -hmm. The second would be um, relevance. And the third one would be reverence. Okay, let's talk yes. about the first one, yeah. relationships. Relationships. Well, first of all, the relationships in the family have to be healthy. If they're not healthy, then you're gonna have a hard time with the others to follow. But if you have a healthy relationship, then um, reverence is going to follow behind. Because um, if you think about it, reverence is another word for respect mm -hmm. and honor. So if you have healthy relationships in your family, then reverence is gonna follow along behind. Let me make sure that I understand. You're saying to, that in order to develop a relationship with Jesus, it helps to have a good relationship with people? Within your family, yes, which spills out over into other uh, people. Sure. Mm -hmm. I see this every day with Lucy. I get up early in the morning uh -huh. to speak to uh, work, and when I come in for worship time, which is a little bit later, uh -huh. when my demeanor is wrong uh -huh. or off uh -huh. or bad, it my family reflects it right back to me. Mm. Uh -huh. it, that is. <clears throat> 
part of my responsibility in making sure that if something's off kilter with him, I need not to react to that because then we're going to have a clash. Mm -hmm. And she sees it. The little mm -hmm. girl sees it. And reacts clash. to it. And of course. Reacts to yeah. it. Sure. And then, of course, we go to school, and what happens? Yeah. She's not getting her work done in mm -hmm. school, yeah. Yeah. or she comes home with a pile of homework. Right. And so it's really incumbent upon mom and dad to make sure that there's that healthy relationship. So again, mm -hmm. relationship first, mm -hmm. then? Um, reverence. Reverence. And then relevance. Relevance. Now talk about that relevance part. Relevance, that's a little harder, but the way we make Jesus relevant to our young children is that he has to be relevant to us. Mm -hmm. He has to be changing who we are. Mm. We have to have a real relationship with Jesus Christ, converted hearts, mm -hmm. so that we are changing not only how we think, how we speak, how we interact with, within our homes, which is gonna impact how we interact outside the home, mm -hmm. which is family members are gonna see it, Friends are going to see it. Mm -hmm. And we have to have that change within us. Because when your children are watching you mm -hmm. and you're changing for the better, that's attractive to them. Well, sure. I think yeah. you're really what you're really saying, Christine, is the first thing is our children need to see Jesus mm -hmm. in us. Right. That's right. If they don't see Jesus mm -hmm. in us, then how is he going to become their best friend? It, I, it would be very difficult. They have to be attracted to the Jesus Christ that is reflected through us before they're ever going to be attracted mm -hmm. to Him. And they see the growth too. You know, they'll see, yeah. I'll have to come in and apologize. Or I'll mm. have to come in and say, please forgive so me. So you're for, not saying you have to right. be perfect. That's right. I'm not. I mean, uh -huh. you, you can't be. Right. Not without Jesus mm -hmm. anyway. Yeah. So yeah. coming in and, and destroying an atmosphere means I have an opportunity to grovel a little bit and say, mm -hmm. please forgive me. Mm -hmm. I want to ask you something, Kevin. You're a pastor. Yes. And so some parents, some dads might say, well, I'm not a pastor. I don't know if I can be then an adequate parent to my child. Uh, what would you respond to that? Well, my response would be any father plays a key role in the development of the entire family. Amen. In fact, mm -hmm. I think it's probably the mm -hmm. most critical role in the family because I have this belief that power from heaven flows from God the Father mm -hmm. to Jesus, mm -hmm. to the father of the family, to the mother, to the children. So you're mm -hmm. a conduit of the Father's power and grace and when love. I'm yeah. that, when I'm doing it right, I'm a conduit. That's yeah. Right. Yeah. But let's talk to the single moms who are out there and mm -hmm. watching this right now and they're thinking, you know, for a number of reasons, I find myself in a situation where I'm a single mother mm. raising my child, and, and I can't do that. I can't do what Kevin just said needs to happen. But God has promised to be a father to the fatherless. Ah. So let's yes. remind them of that. Yes. But what is so powerful is when a single mom or dad yes. mm -hmm. starts to re rely fully upon Jesus Christ. When they have a problem, when they have a concern, when there's not enough money, there's not enough food, mm. or there's a health incident. When they start to rely more and more fully upon Jesus Christ and that child is brought into those prayer circles and, and I've done it with my own daughter when I'm having a rough time over whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. I'll say, Lucy, I need, you, I need you to come here for a moment. And she's such a lovely child. She comes over and, and I'll say, I need to pray right now. This is my problem. Now, this does not mean that I'm parentifying her right. or I'm mm -hmm. making right. her an adult. Right. I'm sharing with her that I need help from Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. well, let's kneel down together and will you pray with me? Mm -hmm. And she does. And then it's important that she sees the other end. When God has answered my prayer and, and honored my faith, she needs to see that. She needs to be told about it so that she can go, oh, he is real. He really mm -hmm. does care. Sure. But, but right. you know, that's what I want you to talk to us about. How did you get Lucy to the point she is today where Jesus is real? He's not just, you know, our kids, sometimes 
their stuffed animals become more real to mm -hmm. them than this Jesus that they, well, their stuffed animal they can hold close. It's their security or their security blanket at night becomes actually more real than a Jesus. So mm. how do you bring, how did you bring Lucy this abstract to the point? Figure, this abstract concept. You're completely right because young children are concrete thinkers and they're literal. So they believe what they see and they believe what you say and it never occurs to them that you might not be telling them the truth about Santa mm -hmm. Claus mm -hmm. or the Tooth Fairy or the Easter Bunny. It never occurs to them that those are not real. Mm -hmm. If you say they are, they are. they're literal yeah. thinkers, they believe you. Mm -hmm. So there's the first key. You be honest in all your communications. Mm -hmm. It's very hard in this world when they, we are inundated with things like Disney and uh, television, and cartoons mm -hmm. and the, the games, you were inundated with that. And those things, they can touch and they can feel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, you can go to Disneyland and have your picture taken with Snow White. <laughs> That's, right. Right. That's real. That's mm -hmm. right. So, and then you try to come home and, and try to talk about this nice man in a book named Jesus. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. well, we don't see him or, but he lived 2000 years ago and yeah. it's too abstract. Absolutely. So what we have done, other than our own personal relationship with each other and with God, which by the way is very important that we have our own relationship with God. I mm -hmm. don't rely on his relationship with God. That's right. But some of the more practical things that we have done, um, obviously we start by reading books mm -hmm. and singing songs with her. And by the way, when you say we, I I'm assuming both of you, or is it just only you who read the books to Lucy? No, no, we both read the books. <laughs> you both. In fact, I like to act them out as I read them. You know, <laughs> Absolutely. I'll make voices and have fun with it. You know, which leads me to, to kind of another question, and we, we want to hear more about those steps. Uh, but we think that the role of, of the mothers is the most critical role, the most important role in the life of the child. During those first few years, Okay, I but agree. what about the role of the father? Is it really important or does it come in later? <laughs> it, no, it comes in right at the beginning because it's that support mechanism that the mm -hmm. child feels safest in. Mm. And when you don't have a father, for example, when there's a single parent, I think God finds ways around that. Maybe it's an elder at the church, mm -hmm. maybe it's a friend, uh, maybe it's someone else who can play that role. And sometimes he has to pour his power right into mommy. Mm -hmm. So I don't think I, I have seen, excuse me, but I have seen some really powerfully, spiritually powerful mm -hmm. single moms Very. that I have learned from because they relied fully on Christ. And they were very creative with how they introduced Jesus or Bible stories with their child. Yeah, we're going to get back into that because I think we, we need to make sure we encourage single parents as well. But we're going to take a little break right now and then we'll talk more about specifics that we can do to help our children have a forever friendship with Jesus. All right. You can probably already tell that we will not be able to cover every area, every concern, or every question you may have with just one parenting resource. Parenting will continue to produce new challenges and questions every day. As our children grow and change, so do the parenting challenges. Our goal is to continue this conversation with up-to-date resources and parenting tools. We will do this online via our website. There, you will find out about any updates to these materials. And in addition, you will receive downloadable resources on a regular basis. It's our desire that this resource will assist you in your God-given role as a parent using principles that are firmly grounded in the Word of God. So now let's go back to our conversation with our guests on today's program as we continue on the journey of exploring our God-given role of parenting. Well, before the break, we were talking about single parents, but whether you're a single parent or a married couple with children, what can a parent do? to make sure that their children develop a relationship, a forever friendship with Jesus? What would be some specifics? When Lucy was a baby, and when I work with crater roll children, they really enjoy props. Mm -hmm. They enjoy uh, rhythm instruments, musical instruments, the stuffed animals, the pictures, 
using those to help tell the story, mm -hmm. keeping it short, simple. Are you talking about? Worship time. Oh, the family worship time. That's what you're talking okay. about. Okay. Mm -hmm. You don't want worship time to become a time where you lecture or give a mini sermon. Well, not for little kids. Well, you know, when they've been misbehaving, <clears throat> there's the tendency to try and use that time to, mm -hmm. let's get this straight. Well, that's not the time. You can use Bible stories, for instance, the story of Saul when he was disobedient to God. You can use those types uh -huh. of stories to help um, make a point. But one of the nicest ways to make your point is to ask questions. Ask questions of what if, and then formulate a question or find a question about, um, I wonder, I wonder what would happen if, I wonder, and then formulate a question. Give them opportunities to use their imagination mm -hmm. to recall the story and to talk about it. Uh -huh. So often we want the children to sit and listen. Yes. They need to be participants, participants right. in the worship mm -hmm. time. Yeah. So worship, in other words, family mm -hmm. worship in your home is not something where your, your child you know, walks in with their head hung low because they know they're going to listen to dad read for an hour the book of Revelation. Yeah. That would be boring. And they're going to really look forward to that all day long, <laughs> right? <laughs> you know, sometimes it's just changing the cadence of your voice as you're reading. You know, mm -hmm. reading is a, is a critical element of family mm -hmm. worship. Right. But sometimes I'm just reading and I'll make a voice for Zacchaeus and it'll be something like this. You know? uh -huh. Yeah, so you're up in a tree looking at you. Yeah, we're a little bit of dramatization. Uh -huh, uh -huh. But not too much. Mommy's always going, yeah. not too much. It is worship time, <laughs> not too much. Oh, but, <laughs> but that makes it exciting. But it it does. exciting. Mm -hmm. One of our favorites in our family is charades. And you can do charades with lots of different ages, especially if you have an age span of children. Uh -huh. We have been visiting friends who had children that were older and younger than Lucy, and they love charades. We yes. give them a few Bible books out there, uh -huh. and they, they go through the Bible books, they choose a story, and then they run back in, and they do these crazy skits, <laughs> and they do their best to trip us up. Uh, mm. Is there something else that these parents can do? You know, you don't want to do charades seven days a week, <laughs> No, maybe. it gets boring then. So what are some other things that parents who have, you know, more than one child, different age groups can do? Sure. In, at the Ojai Church, where Kevin and I minister, we have one children's Sabbath school, and it has mm. all the ages in it. We have 11-year-olds okay. all the way down to, oh you know, my, yeah. six the months The newborns. Old. And so we do encourage the parents to bring their newborns, because when they're babies, they are starting to form those relationships they, at church, and they are watching reverence being modeled. Huh. So there you go back to the three R's again, your sure. relationship, your reverence, and we encourage those babies to come to church. Now, in that one Sabbath school classroom, when the babies are there, the, you know, seven to 12 year olds, mm -hmm. they're not really excited about the infants, you know, ring-a-ling-a-ling yeah. -a -ling with the right, bells, right. but they do like to help. They can oh, lead out I'm in the sure. singing. They can hand out the props. They can pick up the props. They can, you know, when the flood came and there was water, they can use the spray bottle of water on, and <laughs> or just the noises. Or they make the noises, or, yeah. they make the noises or, or they can help us set up um, the podium where Jesus so read they, from. You they know? actually mm -hmm. then begin to own Mm -hmm. their own worship mm -hmm. experience. Right. Mm -hmm. It's not something they sit mm -hmm. back and watch others do. And they're giving to someone else. So they're beginning yes. to realize the real meaning of worship, yeah. which mm -hmm. is to praise the Father right. by helping someone else. Mm. Mm -hmm. Boy, that's a great idea, it, especially for small churches where you only have one Sabbath school class. Right. Yeah. And I think actually you started to answer my next question where all these parents say, you know, I have an infant. Is it really important? that I take my child to church every week. Mm. You know, mm -hmm. they don't understand the sermon. They don't know what's They're going gonna, on. They're going to cry and make why, everybody upset. Why does it matter? We were up all night. Why? Oh, I know. I was tempted when Lucy was born. I was tempted to stay home. I'm like, I am exhausted. I was up three times mm -hmm. in the night nursing. Yes, I was tempted. And I admit, I stayed home maybe once or twice. But the guilt, I was like, oh, I'm the pastor's <laughs> wife. Really? I realized how important it was for her to be at church. 
because she's starting to recognize those people. She recognizes the elders or um, the ladies, the deaconesses that, that serve the potluck food. Mm -hmm. she's, mm -hmm. And she's being held by different people. Yes. So you're building those relationships mm -hmm. outside. And remember, during the Sabbath hours, there are typical routines and rituals. And the most important things in an infant's life are rituals mm -hmm. and routines mm -hmm. and relationships. Yeah, accustomed to hearing the sounds, mm -hmm. the noises, all those things. Are yes, and, and watching everything being modeled for them. Everyone stands to sing and everybody sits yeah, for yeah, this yeah. or mm -hmm. they kneel down for this prayer. And what's that thing going by and everybody's putting stuff in. I think I'll take something out, you know, and, <laughs> you know, but they, they are able to participate. And at our church, I, we are blessed that the church members want the children involved. We don't have a children's church. Uh -huh. We have a church for children. Oh, yes, of So course. the children mm -hmm. can help take up the offering. Yes. You know, another thing we did, if you don't mind yeah. me mentioning this, you might think this is advanced Christianity or Adventism or something, but we held, we had the children in Cradle Roll actually build all of the well, pieces wait. of the sanctuary. Don't think wow. Cradle Roll of, as, as yeah. the infant. It, but all it their, was the, the different school. age groups, mm -hmm. as you were mentioning, yeah. you know, and and the little kids got into it and they loved it. You know, we didn't go into the, some of the not so savory parts of that, but we, we didn't get into the sacrifice. We yes. talked about symbols and we talked about pieces yeah. and parts, and we still have those pieces today. That's an exciting way That's to exciting. get involved. You know, yeah. Kevin and Christine, our time has just gone by far too quickly, but we're so blessed that you were able to join us to get today. And once again, thank you so much yes. for being here. Well, thank it's, you. It was our pleasure. And we want to thank you for joining us as we have explored this challenging topic of parenting today. We invite you also to visit our parenting website, helpimaparent.org. And there you will find many additional resources and materials. When you feel like screaming out, help, I'm a parent, claim God's promise. Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Regardless of the challenges of parenting, God is with you. You are not alone. Reach out claim His promises, and take His hand and journey together with Him. Join us next time on Help, I'm a Parent, Christian Parenting in the Real World, when we will talk about how you can help your child experience the joy of serving others. But until then, we invite you as a parent to cling to your Heavenly Father. <laughs>